Hi again, well, so I have the uh, example here for horizontal asymptotes, and I'm just going to try to explain it to you a little bit. Um, a horizontal asymptote is a horizontal invisible line that we can't cross on the graph. So maybe it goes across like that. And so all horizontal lines on a graph have the equation y equals something because it has to do with them crossing at this value of y here and the value of y will always remain the same so like if uh, say this is 1 if I go you know x1 if I go over 1 on the x-axis I would go up 1 to the line if I go over 2 I would go up 1 to the line and so on so we, the equation of this line is y equals 1, and that's the equation of a horizontal asymptote if it's one of these boundary lines that we're talking about, okay? So, if we go and we have a look at the equation that I've got here, the way that we find an asymptote is that we are going to find the limit of this function as x is approaching infinity. So, in other words, as x is becoming really, really, really large, what's happening to the value of y in the function? What, what kind of trend are we seeing? So, really, what you could do is just kind of look at it and say to yourself, okay, I'm going to put in infinity in place of x. And then what you do is just let common sense kick in and you say to yourself, all right, in comparison to infinity, how much is two or one, right? Like if you had infinity dollars and I said, you know, happy birthday, here's two dollars, you'd be like, yeah, I don't really need that. I've got an infinity of these. It's insignificant, right? And so really what happens is in a, in a question like this, if the bottom is so large that it's basically, um, it's going to end up being sort of like 1 over infinity. We're dividing 1 by the largest number in the world, so it's going to approach the value of 0. The larger the denominator gets, the smaller and smaller and smaller we're going to get there, right? And so in this case, if we let x approach infinity, the limit becomes 0. That means that over here on our grid, it's going to be the x-axis, this line right here, at y equals 0, because y equals 0, that is our um, horizontal asymptote, our invisible line that we can't cross, okay? Then what we do with it is we want to get a picture of how the graph is behaving around that line because it makes the graph do certain things. When the graph can't cross it, it has to deal with it somehow and go in a certain direction. So what we do is we just pop a large value of x and a small value of x into the equation to have a look and see what's happening. And so what we do is we'll say, you know, let's choose a value like x equals 10. That's a big enough x to be a large value. So at x equals 10, the function minus the asymptote, so 2x plus 1 minus the asymptote, which is 0. And I know that seems silly, but if the asymptote is something other than 0, that's really important. So if you had gotten 1 or something, you would put a 1 there, and it makes a difference. If I put 2 over 10 plus 1 minus 0, I get 2 over 11, and that's a positive number. And that tells us in this case that the graph stays above, oops, above the asymptote. So as x is getting larger and larger, my graph is staying above that asymptote line. Now if I do the same thing, only I do it with minus 10, let's see if I can move this up a wee bit, if I do it with minus 10, then I'm going to get 2 over negative 9. 
Now that's a negative, which tells me that the line stays below the asymptote for large negative values of x. And so when I'm graphing it up here, I'm going to keep it under the asymptote as it's going to larger and larger, well, I guess smaller and smaller values of x because we're in the negatives, right? So negative 10 would be this way. So it helps us shape the graph and see how it, it looks um, when we do the asymptotes, and it shows us areas that we can't cross. Um, so it, it's, it helps us divide up the graph into different sections if that's what's going to happen with a graph like this. Um, basically, with horizontal asymptotes, um, anything that's not an x is insignificant, and you can just kind of disregard it and then you want to substitute in your, your um, infinity value and see what kind of um, value you would end up getting in the equation when that happens. And then that's how you can determine what it's going to do.